guys, welcome back to another video where I'm gonna do my very best to answer all of your wonderful questions. It's been a hell of a long time since we've done a Q&A. So without further ado, let's get into the sucker, shall we? What caliber would you suggest for elk hunting keep up the great content? Thank you very much for that. I know a bunch of guys have had mad success with the 6.5 PRC, 7 PRCs, but if you've got a 300 WSM or a Win Mag or something to that effect, it's absolutely gonna hammer elk. It's very important when we discuss hunting that shot placement, for the most part, is gonna do its job. I mean, I know guys that shoot kudu, with six millimeters and the African animals are pretty freaking tough and some species are notoriously tough like the sable that I recently shot with my 6.5. So shot placement is everything. Having said that, I wouldn't recommend shooting an eland for example or an eland as we call them here in South Africa with a six millimeter. It's looking for trouble. So larger calibers generally buys you that little bit of margin for error if your shot is a slightly further back shot just smashing into the target a little bit harder gives you that margin for error so that is something to consider now the counter argument to that is larger calibers bigger boom more difficult to shoot especially in a hunting package because those rifles are generally a little bit more lightweight you could potentially you know be a little bit more scared of your rifle due to a larger recoiling system so keep that in mind hence the seven mils are so popular it's kind of that sweet spot hits hard enough doesn't have a lot of recoil and that is why seven rem mags and things like that have been such amazing hunting cartridges for so long so keep that in mind perhaps consider seven prc or something to that effect so ash asked what made you figure out that your rifle had shifted zero at a recent match now the morning of the match, there was basically no wind and I was hitting off the right of the target. Something just said to me, Pete, go check out your things because the previous day I did drive a little bit faster than I probably should have over some speed bumps and maybe my rifle took a little bit of a knock. Now the previous day, it was so ridiculously windy that there was no way of diagnosing whether or not I had a zero offset because it was 45 kilometer per hour gusting winds throughout your stage. So you really had nothing to go on. But that specific morning, it was very calm and I was still hitting off the right despite my knowledge knowing that there was no wind at like 500 meters. So I took that, went to the zero range, immediately confirmed what I thought was happening, just kind of set that in and I was off to the races and started playing catch up. So that's what made me decide. As soon as I was able to know what the wind value would have been over that distance, I knew that there was no way I was shooting off the right. So I re-zeroed it. Thank goodness I went to do that. When are MDT bringing out the J Allen chassis in different colors? So I do believe we've got black and we've got FDE at the moment. Now what you guys have to understand from a stock management point of view, colors are the death. It is so difficult to manage. It incrementally increases the variations of things you have to keep in stock. So it's very difficult to do. I don't know if they're gonna be doing random colors. The good news is we've got thousands of amazing Cerakote artists, because it is an art, that you can actually take your J. Allen to and they can put a unique twist on it. And I really like that look. So it is extra money to spend, but then it is 100% unique to yourself. So if you want funky colors or a unique design, maybe consider checking out some custom Cerakote work in your area. Best shooting advice you have received and best shooting advice you can give. For me, I guess it was getting proper training up front, I decided to go for in-person training, which was very expensive and probably not the best training I could have gotten, but it was my only option really at that point. And it made me, it took me from a point of conscious incompetence. You know, I was aware of the fact that I didn't know everything because I'd already shot that first match and absolutely ate shit. <laughs> and um, I went to this training and it fast-tracked my learning in a sense that it taught me what to work on. And that's ultimately, you know, fast forward a few years, I'm sponsored by all these amazing brands and I'm winning matches left, right and center. And I thought this is such a unique opportunity for me to take those skills that I've developed over the years and sort of my way of doing it and giving it back to you guys. And I charge an absolute nothing fee compared to what some of the other programs are out there. And we also offer that 100% money back guarantee. Now, very importantly, as with anything, if you go out and you just shoot, okay, or if I go out and I just smash golf balls all day, you'll probably get better, but your rate of learning could be much slower. And the other danger is, well, in our case, we're physically burning money, I guess, but you can develop bad habits, which could be really, really difficult to unlearn later on. So in the beginning, 
Get training early, it's gonna save you the money, it's gonna repay itself 100 times over if you're committed to the sport. So that would be the best advice that I can give you guys. <laughs> and that actually leads us to the very next question. Will you provide training for me, please? Absolutely, the link to our training is down below and you can do it in your comfort of your own home and I'm giving you the tools that you can take to the range or to your reloading bench and implement proven systems into your shooting. Now I get asked caliber questions all the time, 6.5 versus 6 mil, as is the case. There's a huge asterisk to any one of these questions and it is, it depends. It depends on your specific use case. What are you using this rifle for? Is this a competition rifle? Is this a hunting rifle? If it's a competition rifle, in specifically precision rifle, the trend is going towards six mil, or at least it did for a long time. I see some guys shooting six fives with great success. I shot six five Creedmoor with great success. On a hunting front, it depends what you want to hunt. You want to hunt bigger game like kudu size animals, you might want to consider getting a six five Creed, six five PRC or something to that effect also nothing wrong with a 260 it's been hammering for years or if it's smaller size antelope you want to shoot bless buck impala springbok those kind of things six mil is going to absolutely do it for you so to answer your question it depends these are the comments that make this so worth it being a kid and getting into long range shooting, you've been a very good role model slash teacher. Guys, this is literally why I have this YouTube channel. I wanna share the mistakes that I make because it is a very expensive sport and making mistakes <laughs> gets very expensive. So if you can learn from my mistakes and implement those lessons in your shooting and become better faster, that is 100% the goal of this channel. <laughs> I hope my wife doesn't watch this video. How much does your most expensive rifle cost? Um, my most expensive rifle probably pushes 200 over 200,000 Rand you know the retail price keep in mind we're in South Africa so things are a little bit more expensive so 200,000 Rand is about ten thousand dollars give or take uh, the current exchange rate that's obviously ever-changing depending on when you're watching this this is kind of end of the year 2023 my most expensive rifle probably 230,000 give or take yeah that's kind of where we are and it gets up there quick you know uh, chassis bipod trigger barrel action scope wings scope suppressor it yeah <laughs> buy money <laughs> so yeah it is an expensive sport but you can get amazing results with a 60,000 Rand rifle even if you go budget and that's guys always laugh when I say budget rifle budget rifle you know if you want to do our sport and you kind of need a chassis rifle it gets quite expensive quickly anyway so yeah it kind of an expensive sport my thoughts on the seven rem mag for a little bit of everything i like it i honestly do like it you guys know i'm a massive fan of seven millimeter seven mils are freaking awesome it's like the sweet spot between a hard hitting caliber and something that doesn't rock your socks in terms of recoil however times have changed and i don't think that if you're buying a rifle now, you should consider getting a 7 rem mag with the influx of 7 PRCs. It's gonna be better SAMI spec, inherently more accurate. So I would kind of lean towards the 7 PRC. With the marketing budget from Hornady's side, I honestly think you're gonna be safe and it's not gonna be something that falls by the wayside. I myself will be picking up a 7 PRC pretty soon, the moment they're here in South Africa and I'm also busy with a custom build. So if ever there is a Hawa 7 PRC coming out or a Bagara for that matter, whatever I can get my hands on first, you guys can bet your left nut that I'm gonna be buying one of those and showing you guys the results on the channel. So I'm super, super pumped for those to hit our shores. When are we getting an update on the Carbon Hawa 6.5 Creedmoor project? That's been a very fun project. I have actually done the initial load development with that. I should actually take it out shooting again this week sometime. So look forward to perhaps an update on that in December or early January. Super, super pumped with that. Also, I need to Cerakote that chassis because that video did hit the like goal. So perhaps I can try and get that down before we wrap the year up and show you guys the sort of vision I have in mind for that project. What is my favorite gun? I would say at the moment, my favorite gun is my six millimeter Dasher. And the pure reason is I can do a little bit of everything I've Configure it into a hunting rifle with the HT 26. I can pop it into J. Allen or a Timber or a ACC Elite and have a mean precision rifle slash field shooting system. It is such a versatile cartridge. I've even taken it to like King of One Mile matches and qualified for the finals with a little six mil against like 300 Normas and stuff like that. It's phenomenally accurate, low recoiling, easy to load for. It's just you know, it's got so much going for it. It is a wonderful cartridge. Unfortunately, it's not available off the shelf, so you have to build one or convert a 243 into one. But 
phenomenal. There's a reason why all these precision rifle shooters gravitate towards that specific case or variations of that case. They are stupid accurate and that's why I love my 6 Dasher. Is the Primal Rights competition priming tool worth the money? It depends how much you shoot. For me as a serious competition shooter, I shoot a couple of thousand rifle rounds every year. It is freaking awesome. It gives you that ability to hard stop your primers and actually set the priming depth. Because believe it or not, how deep or how much you crush your primer into the case actually has quite a large effect on your accuracy. And that tool gives you so much control. Also, once you have that little flicking motion down, it is rapid, it is so fast and for me, I always say my time is worth so much more, less time reloading, more time with the family or more time shooting or hunting or whatever the case may be. And for that, that tool is freaking awesome. So if you want to check out the uh, Primal Rights tool, I've got a video on the channel somewhere. World's Best Priming Tool, I think is the name of that video. I'm going to try and link it for you if I remember when I edit this. Cool. Can I do a detailed video on my 223 bolt gun? Now, you guys haven't seen the 223 on the channel for a very long time because my friend Skulk loved that rifle so much that he bought it from me and I was an absolute idiot to sell it to him but he's been thoroughly enjoying that rifle. The good news however, I recently got my export permits approved from the US so I should have a new 223 and a 308 and I think 10 other rifles arriving here early next year so we're gonna have so much fresh new rifle content super super pumped on that note let me know if you guys like the shirt with my mdt acc this is actually my rifle bella in like a line art format if you guys like the shirt there's going to be a link to pre-order a limited run of these make sure you get on it the proceeds of me selling merch and stuff like this go directly towards funding this channel so if you want to support the channel and get some cool merch while you're at it please support us by using the link down below. My favorite game meat without a doubt is kudu. Kudu is just on another level. You know, when you eat springbok and stuff like that, you can sometimes still taste that gaminess, although I love that taste. But kudu, you could serve a person kudu that's never had kudu in their life before and they'll say, wow, this steak is incredible. So kudu, I've never had elk. I'm very keen to have elk. Hopefully one day the stars will align and I'll be able to go do an elk hunt and bring you guys along. So hold thumbs for that. I think let's pray for that because I'd really like to experience some elk meat that I've harvested myself. <laughs> if you sold every firearm and all the firearm kit you own, how much money would you have? A lot. <laughs> I'd probably be able to buy a very nice house. This is again one of those questions that hopefully my wife never sees. Um, why do you guys ask me these things? But it's a lot, yeah. So I try and manage the amount of firearms I have just because otherwise there's so many things to manage the whole time. So yeah, just trying to not get it, have it get ridiculous. And I try and keep it under 20, but you know, 20 custom rifles with optics, it's an expensive endeavor, as you know. This question comes from Matt, one of our patrons. What piece of reloading kit specifically for brass prep saves the most time? Without a shadow of a doubt, that title goes to the Henderson case trimmer. It trims, chamfers, and deburs your cases to perfection. It is a phenomenal piece of kit, and we actually sell them on the Impact Pro Shop for the guys in South Africa. We have them in stock. It is such an awesome piece of kit, and the value for money in terms of time that I get back, and the fact that my fingers aren't dying with the cordless drill thing I used to do, is awesome. Now, if you can't afford that and it's slightly out of your price range, perhaps consider something like the you know RCBS case prep stations or something to that. The problem with those is they don't trim. So it's another step. So the Henderson trimmer is, mwah, I wish I had that sooner. Update on my Land Cruiser project. So as you guys know, I'm restoring a 1980-something FJ60. That project is kind of still in the works, and 100% it's in the works. Unfortunately, we ran into some delays. My motor, when I was restoring the motor, the guy stole the motor. So now we've had to source a new motor that's massively delayed the project. So new motor is in the works and hopefully by the end of this year, I'll be driving my Land Cruiser. It has turned into an absolute money pit, as you can imagine, but we're kitting it out. It's going to be badass. And I actually just before filming this video chose the steering wheel that I'm going to put on it. So I cannot wait to get my Land Cruiser back. Thank you so much to everyone that submitted your questions. Unfortunately, I couldn't answer all of them. Otherwise this video would be 19 hours long. With that said, 
please share these videos with your mates, like, comment, and subscribe on all these videos so we can get this channel rocking towards 250,000 subscribers. That is our goal for the end of next year. If we can get there, that'll be absolutely epic. So please make sure you are subscribed and you have the notifications on so we can punch the algorithm in the face and circumvent it. Guys, thank you very much. Have a blessed festive season if you're on holiday already, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.